Oh my gosh. Hey, I am so glad we could do this again. Uh, and let me just say, since the last time we got together over coffee, I have gone a little out of control with my love of coffee. I mean, I've now got like, I mean, wow, at least five different ways just to make a cup of coffee. Y'all, that is a little much. A little much. But, um, it's such an act of worship for me. That sounds a little weird, but it is. Uh, from opening the bag and getting that first smell of the coffee beans, right, to the process of making it, uh, to, to frothing the milk and watching it expand, and honestly, the amazement that I get from being able to pop a K-cup in and have a good cup of coffee in less than five minutes. I just, it's amazing. It is. Uh, today I'm enjoying what would my most, my current favorite drink, changes every couple days. I found it at the Starbucks Cafe in Barnes & Noble. It's a cinnamon almond milk macchiato, okay? Mine's a little different from theirs. Mine is good. Theirs tastes like warmth. It tastes like being warm. Do with that whatever you, you feel like, um, but that's how I feel about it, so. But anyway, I've got this uh, cup of coffee that I am enjoying. I've got a good friend with me, and I wanna talk to you today about something that's been weighing on my heart. I wanna to talk to you about awkward silences. Okay, can we talk about this for a few minutes? Do you have a few minutes to talk about awkward silences? Uh, before we dive in, I would really love to pray over our conversation today, if that's all right. Oh, Father, I pray your guidance and blessings over this conversation today. God, I pray over this conversation over coffee. I pray that this dear friend of mine, I pray over them that their heart would be strengthened and at the same time broken. I pray the same over myself, God. God, my words strengthen and break my heart. That our hearts, God, would be broken for what breaks yours and that we would be strengthened by you and you alone. You are a good, great God, and you are huge and able. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who calls himself our friend. In the name of our friend Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Awkward silences, right? That's not what they're like. Uh, that might seem like a truly random topic, but it, it's not. Uh, I'm doing school right now. I'm in school uh, online through Grand Canyon University. Go Lopes! That just happened. Let it sit there for a minute. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to school and my professor shared this story with me. It's about Matt Redman, okay? Now, if you don't know who Matt Redman is, congratulations on being the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, you got that reference if you were supposed to. Anyway, Matt Redman is the awesome British worship leader and songwriter that has given us songs like 10,000 Reasons and lots of other ones, but that's the only one I'm going to mention because, y'all, it's 10,000 Reasons, so no arguments. But anyway, Matt Redman, I get confused, keep me on track. Matt Redman was noticing at this time that uh, his church was going through a period of intense apathy, right? Uh, especially in the musical portion of their worship. They just weren't quite clicking. And Redmond says that his pastor had a bold approach to trying to fix this problem. Redmond says that he decided to get rid of the sound system and band for a season and we gathered together with just our voices. His point was that we'd lost our way in worship and the way to get back to the heart would be to strip everything away. His goal, the pastor's goal, was to remind his church family that they needed to produce worship and not just consume it. And he got this point across by asking, when you come through the doors on a Sunday, what are you bringing as your offering to God? Now, as might be expected, initially, this led to some very awkward 
silence is. Uh, I don't know where you're at in life, like age-wise, uh, but when I was in high school, tell me if you remember this, anytime something got awkward, one of the teenagers in the conversation would do this. Awkward turtle. See? It's a little turtle. He's on his back. He's got his little legs spinning because he can't flip over. Anyway, uh, it eventually became all kinds of weird, awkward animals with hand gestures, including my friend Julie, her favorite. And I think she invented this. I'm going to say she did. She's not here. And whoever did invent it, if it wasn't her, isn't here either. Uh, but she would wait and let it get really, really awkward. And then whoever had said the awkward thing, she would get like right in their face uh, and, and, do, and do awkward salmon. And it was awkward salmon! That happened. Uh, but we, we did, we put the awkward salmon in the awkward silences. And the thing about awkward salmon or awkward turtle or awkward koala bear was that it was so nice because it broke up the awkward silence, right? Because if we're honest, just for a quick minute right here, you and me, we hate awkward silences. And now that we've admitted that, I think the next logical step to take is to ask a one word question. Why? Right? Why do we hate silence? Because I would argue that we aren't just afraid of awkward silence, we simply hate silence so much that every silence becomes awkward, okay? That's my opinion. And I'm also of the opinion that that is ridiculous, right? It's so crazy. We're sitting here talking today, you and me, so I know that you are at least interested in the truths to be found in this book right here. And if we're honest, this book, it's a Bible if you're confused, this book tells us that some pretty amazing things have happened in silence. Don't believe me? God's promise to Abraham happened in the silence of a starry night. God commissioned Moses to let his people go in the silence of a mountaintop. Some of God's greatest hymns of praise written by the human hand of David came in the silence of a sheep pasture. The savior of the world was born in the silence of a barn. Okay, some of the most foundational moments of Christian history have required silence for their impetus. So why does it bother us so? We have this mindset in a world of instant gratification, instant entertainment, instant communication, instant oatmeal that every moment should consist of some action that's moving us forward, if not upward. So when it gets quiet, we think we're not working hard enough. But if we're Christians, we got to keep coming back to this book, okay? Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. We've had this discussion. I could open, I could be there before we get here, but then it's like we didn't really talk about this stuff. Ephesians, somebody moved the book of Ephesians. There it is. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Just stay with me, it'll happen. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We have been given gifts from God, and one of them is grace. You know what another one is? Silence. Oh, stay with me here. It's getting good. Let's go to Genesis. It's easier to find. It's right in the front. Uh, what was I saying? Genesis. God is creating all things. For six days, he made stuff, and then we've always heard growing up in the church that on the seventh day, he just, he quit. On the seventh day, he rested. On the seventh day, there was an awkward silence. But Bible scholars and theologians, I sound fancy, uh, they're beginning to think about it in a different way. 
So for six days and 30 verses in our Bible, God created things. Then chapter 2 tells us this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. The heavens and the earth were finished. That sounds to me like there was something else that needed to be made. And we find that thing in verse 2. Verse 2 says, And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. On the seventh day God created silence. Do you see that? Do you see here with me in Genesis that God created silence? And if he created it, it is good. Okay? The Bible tells me so. Yes, I couldn't get the handle on my mug. Get over it. The Bible tells me that it is good. Um, I want to show you that. You don't have to turn there with me. Although if you think turning back and forth between like two and three scriptures is bad, you would never survive a Bethmore Bible study. Oh man, old girl got you feeling like you just want eight Bibles so you can try to keep up. Just try to keep up. Uh, it's all right. God made her and she is good. And that is a truth fact. And I'm going to show you that right here, right here. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. 1 Timothy 4.4. 4. So Genesis tells me that on the seventh day, God created silence. And then my boy Paul over in 1 Tim Tim tells me that... I apologize. My boy Paul over in 1 Timothy... My dear sweet goodness, I apologize for saying that. Uh, he tells me that if God made it, it is good. And I didn't... I don't remember a lot from math class, but I do remember that because of somebody's property, that means that silence is good. Okay? Silence is where we meet God. Right? Silence is where we meditate on God. Silence is where we begin to understand ourselves. Silence is where we try to get other people. Silence is where we enter conversations with God about subjects that are too taboo to talk about with other people. Silence is where we consider starvation, the water crisis, homosexuality, rape, abortion, North Korea's missiles, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, war poverty, and broken hearts. Silence is where we hear God speak on these subjects. And why not? Okay? He is not only the God of good silence. He is the king of of awkward silences. Let me tell you something. There has not been, nor will there ever be, a more awkward silence in the history of the universe than that one Saturday. Do you know what I'm talking about? So, Thursday, you got a bunch of guys having a meal together around a table. Friday afternoon... One of those guys is dead. It's less than 24 hours later. And not just any of them, but the one that the rest of them had put their hope in. Okay? And he didn't just die. He died painfully and slowly and unjustly. And beginning in the moment after, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, left his lips. He became the definition of awkward silence. And he became the definition of awkward silence to reinforce the idea for his children that silence shouldn't be scary. For in that moment of their awkward silence, their greatest victory was being won. In that moment of awkward silence, eternal life was being bought. As Christians, we are going to face some silence. All of it good, some of it awkward. But when we embrace the silence God has created, 
on the other side of it, we find the most victorious outbursts. Ooh, can I start that? Can that become a thing? Girl, I tell you, I am tired of this awkward silence, but I am looking forward to my victorious outbursts. Right? Did you guys go to church yesterday? Why, yes, we did. We were all filled with victorious outbursts. You have to do the shoulders or it's not going to work. Let's start that. You and me, okay? Victorious outbursts. Do you remember Matt Redman? I got way off topic. Uh, he goes on to say that the people in his church, after some extremely awkward silences, the people in his church began to experience victorious outbursts of acapella worship. And beyond that, in a victorious outburst that he had personally, he wrote a song about the experience. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it is all about you Jesus I am sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus and it is it is all about Jesus and I am all out of macchiato which means that it's probably time for us to go. I don't mean to step on the moment, but I just, I, I know it's all about Jesus and I, now I know that I'm all out of macchiato. So those two things seem to go hand in hand for me. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much for meeting up with me today. Uh, and, and thank you for listening to what God has been laying on my heart. I really appreciate it. I cannot express my gratefulness. By the way, I did want to tell you, I posted a new song on my YouTube. I think you'd really like it. Be sure and check it out. So I'll call you or text you. Uh, get in touch with you somehow and we'll have to get together and do this again so soon. Get together and talk about all that God is doing in our lives and laying on our hearts and uh, just talk about it over coffee. <sighs> I'm not really out. But I was done with the thing. Also, I didn't have any almond milk. It's plain milk macchiato. <laughs>